Hi everyone, we love the right zero primitive combined with a writing previous mode because it gives us this code mode that allows us to do everything we can and want to do from userland. However, we're going to see that it doesn't work on every architecture and or Windows operating system. So we're going to see the limitations and what to use on what environment really and we're going to compare it with the increment primitive. Okay, let's get started. So let's analyze one more time the function that gives us the write zero primitive, like the ki try and white thread function. So remember, we need to pass the spin lock that is checking that the lower bit of the thread lock is initially zero, and then this lower bit is changed to one. And finally, at the end of the function, the full 64-bit thread lock is set to zero, which gives us the right zero primitive, and it allows us to uh, override previous mode. And so we noticed this on 64-bit Windows 10 operating system, but these operations could actually differ depending on the operating system version. In other words, it all depends what function or macro is called for the locking and for the unlocking operations. And interestingly, it turns out that Microsoft has changed the function being used over time. So let's analyze more deeply what is happening for the locking operation on 64 bits. So the bit test and set instruction, like the BTS instruction, is basically going to retrieve the single bit at the position indicated by the second operand, and it is going to retrieve that bit from the bit string indicated by the first operand. And it is going to set this information, like this single bit, in the carry flag, which is possible because it's a single bit value, right? And finally, it is going to replace that bit in the original bit string with the value one. And so in the example above, it is going to check the bit zero in the thread lock keyword and save that into the carry, carry flag. And finally, it is going to replace that bit at index zero in the thread lock keyword with value one. And the lock prefix is just here to ensure that the CPU has exclusive ownership of the appropriate cache for the duration of the instruction that follows. So in this case, the BTS instruction. And so it's kind of a way to make sure the instruction that follows is kind of atomic. And so now let's have a look at the unlocking operation again on, on 64 bits. And so in this case, we see that it's an and operation. So it's going to work on the full keyword. And so the fact that there is a difference between the locking, which is done on a single bit, like the lowest bit, and the unlocking operation, which is done on the full keyword, this is what makes it possible to override the previous mode, as we saw it in previous section of this course. And so now let's look at the same kind of locking operation on 32 bits. So, and, and on older operating system versions like Windows 7 or Vista. And it's interesting because we actually see that the locking actually works on the full 32 bit value and not on the actual single bits. So if we look at the assembly, we see the original thread lock was in EBX, then it was moved to ECX, and then we see the value was retrieved in EAX using the exchange instruction. And so EAX holds the actual thread lock value before any modification. And so finally, we see the check that is done on, the, on this original value using the test instruction. And so we see it's done on the full 32-bit value the EAX register. And so it basically means we can't use the previous mode scenario at all on these operating system versions. It's basically because we need the full 32-bit thread lock to be zero in order to pass the spin lock, which will then set it to one. And then it will actually set again the full 32-bit thread lock back to zero 
at the very end of the function. But the problem is, in the context of writing previous mode, it means we would need to have previous mode set to zero initially, so we can override it again with zero. So it's completely useless from an attacker perspective. Okay, so we have looked at the locking and unlocking operations on various operating systems and architectures. Another thing we want to check on various environments is how previous mode is handled across syscalls. And so interestingly, if we look at the Microsoft documentation on the MSDN, this is what we read. When a user mode application calls the NT or ZW version of a native system services routing, the system call mechanism traps the calling thread to kernel mode, then to indicate that the parameter values originated in user mode, the trap handler for the system call sets the previous mode field in the thread object, so the case thread, for the caller to user mode, which means to one. And then the native system services routing checks the previous mode field of the calling thread to determine whether the parameters are from a user mode source. And so what this means is that for every syscall made by a user and thread, the kernel should reset the previous mode to one, effectively overwriting any previous value that was there beforehand. But this contradicts what we saw on Windows 10 1809, right? Because we confirmed by testing that once we have overwritten previous mode with zero, then we can just call NT read virtual memory or NT write virtual memory, and the previous mode set to zero just persists among syscalls. And so the question is why, and is it the same across all operating systems? And so if you reverse engineer the trap handler in the kernel, you will see that the kernel always assumes that a user land thread doing a syscall has its previous mode set to one in its case thread structure and will not actually enforce that for every syscall. The only place where the kernel actually changes the previous mode manually is for optimization reasons, when at some point some kernel code needs to call other functions in the kernel, it will save the old previous mode and then temporarily set previous mode to zero in order to avoid certain checks to be made. And after, it will restore the old previous mode the idea behind doing that is that if a thread that originally came from New Zealand triggered a syscall, theoretically, it would have a previous mode set to one because coming from New Zealand. And if at some point internally, one of the kernel function actually calls another kernel function, the code would temporarily set previous mode to zero in order to speed up function calls and avoid checking the arguments because the arguments have been provided by the kernel and not from New Zealand. And then the old previous mode would then be restored into the case thread structure after the function calls, so before the thread returns to New Zealand. But I guess the main takeaway from this slide is that on 64 bits, the previous mode is preserved among syscalls and is not enforced by the kernel when a syscall is made from New Zealand. So it's different from what the Microsoft documentation stated. However, if we go back to 32 bits, interestingly, in this case, it is done accordingly to the Microsoft documentation. Basically, the previous mode is enforced by the kernel for every single syscall. And it is done by looking up a real previous mode value in the CS register, like the segment register, which we can't tamper with from New Zealand. And so theoretically, there is still a way to abuse this previous mode on 32 bits, which is that we could have two threads. So we would have thread A that keeps setting the previous mode of thread B to the value zero, and then have thread B calling NT read virtual memory or NT write virtual memory in a loop until it succeeds, indicating we want the race condition from like changing previous mode from thread A. And so in this case, the race condition is a different race condition from the KTM bug, obviously, since it's about racing changes for the previous mode for another thread. The other thing we noticed with the increment primitive is that it is a lot more complex than the write zero primitive. 
This is because in the case of the right zero primitive, all we need is to read the ki try unwide thread function, and we don't have to worry about crafting any valid k thread. However, we saw that for the increment primitive, we need to craft a valid fake thread, like at least semi-valid k thread structure, and then sets lots of its field and other structures to avoid our fake thread to be scheduled. And I guess one more thing about the increment primitive is that it only allows us to increment by one a given value. So we need to chain it several times in order to reach any value we want, which makes it a lot more complicated than just writing zero to previous mode, because in this case, we obtain a full arbitrary read-write primitive into the kernel from userland. And so this table summarizes the differences between the write zero primitive and the increment primitive. We can probably start from the bottom of the table because Windows 10, 18, 09 is the version we exploited with the write zero primitive. And so basically for all the 64 bit versions from Windows 7 and above, we know the write zero primitive works because the lock is done on the lower single bits and the unlock is done on the full 64 bits value. And we also confirm that the previous mode is persistent among syscalls, despite the what the Microsoft documentation states. We also noticed by reversing specifically Vista 64 bits that the write zero primitive doesn't work because of some code differences. That being said, because previous mode is persistent, what we could do is just use the increment primitive to override previous mode to zero and do that once, and then just use the arbitrary read write primitive from userland calling nt read virtual memory or nt write virtual memory. So it's still potentially doable to implement like privilege escalation using the previous mode technique. And I guess the funny thing about this is that because in this case, we're using the increment primitive to change previous mode from one to zero. We're going to basically need to set the full 32 bit value aligned with the one byte previous mode field in the K set thread structure. And we're going to need to set that full 32 bit value to FF. FF, 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 and then increment it once to reach zero for that 32 bit value. And since it will align with previous mode, it will allow us to get previous mode set to zero, indicating kernel mode. And then we have more complicated cases. Basically, on 32 bits and for Windows 8 and above, the write zero primitive is possible due to the difference of granularity between the locking and unlocking. But because previous mode is not persistent among syscalls, we would have to race it for every single syscall, which makes it quite annoying to use. And then for even older versions on 32 bits, so for Windows 7 and below, it's even worse. We can't even use the write zero primitive due to the full 32 bit being used for both the locking and unlocking. And also previous mode is not persistent. So if we ever wanted to abuse previous mode in order to elevate privileges, we would have to use the increment primitive to overwrite previous mode to zero and try to race it for every single syscall. And so this would be really, really hard because the increment primitive would require a lot of fake enlistments in order to change previous mode from one to zero. And at the same time, we would try to rage from another thread in order to abuse the overwritten previous mode to zero to do something useful like an actual write or read in the kernel. And so it would be quite unlikely to work properly. And so in this last case, it's actually very useful to have the increment primitive to work like standalone without using previous mode at all, because it means we can actually exploit the vulnerability still. And so in practice, actually for the three top rows, it's actually very useful to have the increment primitive because it simplifies exploitation a lot, even if it's a little bit slower to run the exploits.